Hi, welcome to the Oliver Fetter YouTube channel. Today, I wanna update you, the viewer, on where this build is going. I've been away from Denver for at least a month now, had plenty of time to think about what I wanted to do to this. So a brief recap of where I'm at. This is a 1.6 liter turbo diesel. I'm running a GT2256 VK turbo, which is actually from a Sprinter van. I'm controlling that variable geometry turbo <laughs> with a linear actuator that is being run off an Arduino that sits inside the car. So I have a pressure signal here on my intake pipe and I have a pressure signal I read off my exhaust manifold and the Arduino reads both those signals and controls the turbo accordingly. Now it has been kind of a long process to get that going, mostly because I'm not actually that good with Arduino. I had to have a friend help me out with that. We got pretty good results, honestly. The control it puts out is better than I expected and the overall car responsiveness now combined with a timing kind of refresh and I slowed down my pump timing because this pump has basically no stock parts in it and I was effectively running really advanced injection timing even though it was within normal specs. So between slowing down the injection timing and the VNT turbo and the 10 millimeter hat I put on, all those things have been working together really nicely lately uh, and kind of producing a tapped fast 1.6 liter. Like four years ago, five years ago, I think maybe even six years ago when I first got a Volkswagen, I started with a naturally aspirated V-dub that was my daily driver and it has been my aspiration for this entire time to make it go fast. And it feels like I'm having this lucid dream because it now actually is pretty fast relative to where I started. I mean, relative to where I started, it's a supercar. <laughs> Compared to your average sports car, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> But, so I'm stoked on where I'm at, and then I'm looking to refine that. So this engine also suffered a turbo casualty last fall, which is not a surprise, because that seems to be how I kill all my motors. Um, and I didn't rebuild it or anything this time. I just opened it up. I picked all the little pieces of turbo impeller out of my engine, and then I put it back together. So right now, it has a decent amount of blow-by, enough that it's irritatingly leaking oil, and it also tends to force oil into my exhaust through the hot side of my turbo. None of that is because of the system or the way it's set up. I think it's purely the fact that there's enough blow-by to do that to the car, which is frustrating. So, in parallel to kind of testing and evaluating the system I have going here, I also have a, an ALH engine, an ALH TDI engine that I have completely disassembled in the shop right now. There's parts of it kind of everywhere. <laughs> but very soon here, I'm gonna be building that engine up, which will be sweet because the ALH is basically the same thing as the 1.6, but just like 20 or 40 years newer. We're upgrading quite a few model years in engineering, but it literally fits in the same package. So to put the ALH motor in here, I can use the same transmission, same three mounts, three engine mounts pretty much, and then I just need to change slash buy the driver's, or the passenger side engine mount, excuse me, because it mounts in a slightly different place. And aside from that, I'm gonna be able to reuse my same pump because it's already using TDI injection parts. So it's going to be a mechanical injection TDI. I have a stack of parts over here ready for it. I'm going H-beam rods so that my mechanical pump and the torque that it's going to make probably won't bend the original rods. I got oil-cooled pistons and I honestly forget what else is sitting over there. Good parts. Oh, some ARP head studs and some ARP main bolts and fresh bearings for everything. So when I put the ALH engine together, I expect it to make probably like double the horsepower this is right out of the box, which is going to be insane. I'm very stoked, but I already have this damaged engine in here and it's not to say it doesn't run well, it runs fine, which is kind of hilarious. Uh, <laughs> engine don't care. Since it's already damaged is a 
perfect test bed for figuring things out. So before I take my sketchy VNT turbo system and put it on an engine I just spent $3,000 in parts on, I want to finish tuning it, finish tuning my turbo system specifically, the fueling, the timing, all that stuff, because it will just carry over one-to-one -one onto the ALH engine. So right now I'm at an interesting crossroads. I have these parts everywhere. I have all the new parts to put in the motor that I want to replace this motor with, but then I'm not quite done tuning this yet. So I think kind of two things. On the one hand, I don't want to build the ALH engine up too soon and then have it sit because you never want an engine just to sit. That's literally never good for them. And on the other hand, I don't want to not build it because getting scattered in here there's parts everywhere so I think the plan is now to go ahead and build my short block so put the crank in it put the rods and pistons in it measure my piston protrusion get the head gasket ordered and then when, as long as the short block is together that's the large portion of things that are kind of laying around in the shop which also requires a quick hone so I'll have a video about the honing and assembly of the ALH block coming out soon uh, or as soon as I get to that, which will be in the next couple weeks. This side of things, the Arduino control has kind of been what we've been toying with really hard. And I've been watching a lot of Banks Power. If you're not familiar with Banks, major diesel tuning name. Well, the diesel tuning name. <laughs> uh, lots and lots of good nuggets of information to be extracted from content on the Banks Power channel. And a lot of what Banks preaches and what is 100% accurate, period, uh, <laughs> is that air density is really what you need to make a lot of horsepower. You bring a lot of air density and then you just add the appropriate amount of fuel to get a good air fuel ratio and you make a lot of horsepower. So one of the limitations we have with the Arduino right now is I actually have a thermocouple hooked up here with a pressure sensor because I wanted to measure air density just before the intake. And it turns out with this particular Arduino, we can't run a thermocouple program and also control my linear actuator at the like latency level we want to do. So right now it's just running the actuator and not logging any density data. Additionally, I feel like the Arduino can be a bit glitchy on the control side of things. Its response time isn't quite as fast as I like, which leads to some spikes sometimes and like excessive drive pressure other times. And I don't really feel like I can lean on it 100% in its current state. That's not to say we couldn't solder some connections, kind of flush out those problems, but I think before I spend a lot of time doing that and fully commit to this being an electromechanical control system, I want to try the full mechanical control system. So the reason I hit you with the sponsor blurb is because Dave at Union Coffee is actually going to provide the funding for me to get the Go Fast Bits V2 Boost Controller. You just go to our sponsor of this episode, Cart 999. This video is brought to you by Union Coffee Co. Dave, the owner of Union Coffee, is just creative enough and irrational enough to want to support someone like myself making an otherwise useless hunk of Volkswagen that goes fast. Uh, and he's very kind to do so, but he also gives me a discount code, which I will link his website and the discount code in this description and you can go there and if you enjoy coffee they make very very good beans in-house roasts they don't make the beans mother nature makes the beans you supporting dave indirectly supports this build i would appreciate it if you checked it out which is a mechanical boost controller designed for controlling vnt turbos i also happen to have a vnt 15 turbo that came off the alh which will give me access to its vacuum actuator. So I have the actuator from my VNT15 turbo to put on my current turbo, and then I'm gonna pair that with the Go Fast Bits boost controller to control that mechanical vacuum actuator. So that I'm going to be doing kind of in tandem with rebuilding the engine, and I think I have a feeling it might work better than my Arduino setup, even though this has been pretty cool and pretty fun and it's interesting to tune it on your laptop. I'm excited to test it out. And so then we'll also see both ways of doing it. Like this was the Arduino way of doing it and then I'll see the mechanical way of doing it. And I'm gonna pick whatever's better and more reliable, which I have a feeling might be the mechanical. That's not to say that the Arduino though is dead, no. 
Instead, I think I want to retask the Arduino. Remember how I said it couldn't run the thermocouples and the linear actuator at the same time? Well, now that it's not running the linear actuator, I want to put a pressure sensor and thermocouple at pretty much every point in my track that I can. I'm thinking maybe one in my intake, so pressure and thermocouple, and then maybe one on before my intercooler and one after my intercooler. So effectively capturing how much air density each part of the system is contributing. And then that actually gives me enough data to start tuning stuff in a very real and legitimate way. Without that data, you're kind of shooting in the dark as opposed to what you're doing, especially when it comes to turbo and boost and intercooler and where the air is going and how effective any part of the system is. So that part of getting that data collection set up will be a little bit of a more lengthy process. Yet again, I will probably need to reach out to my friend, Dave. Dave, not the coffee owner Dave. Dave, the Dave that helps me. Professor Dave that helps me with Arduino stuff. And we'll get that data collection going on a bunch of points. So we have actual tuning feedback data coming in, a mechanical boost controlling setup that's bomber and allows the Arduino to be used other where. And then with that setup, I want to push this engine with those things in place until something breaks. That's my plan. Once once everything's in there and it's not going to be a stupid failure, like I don't want to blow the turbo again, I've done that enough times. Once it's not going to be a stupid failure, I want to push this motor until either I lift the head or we bend the H-beam rods or, I don't know, probably crack the head realistically. I feel like that might be the next weak point uh, considering I'm running head studs and H-beam rods or maybe the crank drops out of the bottom. I don't know. Or maybe it just gets to a point where there's just too much oil coming out of the exhaust. That would be a fine quitting point too. So at any rate, when we get that system totally dialed in and this motor is absolutely screaming and or it breaks, then and then only will I rip this motor out of this car, finish the ALH off, put the head on it, get all that crap going, run some lines it's it's gonna be close to an easy swap but not a hundred percent you know like where the radiator hooks in totally different so there's a few things to iron out there still um that give me some anxiety but <laughs> you just gotta just gotta get it in the car and send it i think that's the plan that is what's going on so there'll be videos coming out about the alh build still and then there'll be further tuning going on in the car as well and I'm super excited because I feel like at the end of the tuning, this thing will be ripping fast. Maybe one of the fastest 1.6s ever built, probably. And when I put the ALH in instead of the 1.6, then this car will just go to a whole nother level. You know, I fully expect the ALH to double the horsepower of this. And I'd say my soft target for the ALH horsepower is definitely 300 horsepower. It'd be <laughs> just spin tire all the time, which will lead to a whole new set of problems. Like how do I put the power down? How do I not have tire slip all the time? Whatever, great problems to have. So if you're down for a very science-based tuning exploration of this engine, but also diesel engines in general, and a few engine builds stick around, that's what I'll be doing coming very soon. Appreciate you, thanks for watching. Hit a like button and subscribe if you feel like it. Have a nice day out there.